It was a dream of one of Europe's most famous millionaires to start his own team. Ex Peke, known for his tenure in Fnatic, took the biggest risk of his life and left the organization that made him famous to start a new chapter in his esports career. He created Team Origin, an organization that promised to be the next powerhouse in the European League of Legends scene. Joining it would be several veteran professional players with experience on the world stage and a rookie filled with potential and promise. Together, they rose to the top in an unprecedented amount of time and showcased their skill on the biggest stage of all, the World Championship. However, as fast as they rose to the top, there came a steady decline. Through mismanagement and poor play, the organization would be relegated in 2017. This documentary is a comprehensive account of the decisions made both within the organization and in-game that led to the success and failure of Team Origin during their EU LCS run. My name is Kudo, and this is the rise and fall of Team Origin. It was December of 2014. After leaving Fnatic, Xpeke held a fan meeting in Gamer G to announce his new venture in esports. Xpeke founded a brand new organization called Team Origin. His intention was to field a new roster through the European Challenger Series in hopes of making it into the EU LCS for the summer split. He would essentially be starting from square one and working his way up. The decision to pull the trigger on this dream came from a disappointing conclusion to season four while on Fnatic. After Fnatic did not get out of the group stage, so as Xpeke and Cyanide departed. Xpeke felt it was the perfect time to go once he heard his longtime teammates were leaving too. Throughout the offseason, Xpeke fielded a team with the potential to contend with the best in Europe. Starting in the top lane was his longtime teammate on Fnatic, Soaz. It would be their fourth consecutive year playing together manning the solo lanes. In the jungle was amazing. He recently came off a split in North America's Team Solo mid where they reached the World Championship and finished in the quarterfinals. At support was Mithy, formerly of Lemon Dogs. He was considered one of the top supports in 2013 until he was suspended for a year due to toxicity. After being reinstated, he was ready to redeem his image and prove himself once more on this new team. At 80, Carry was the odd man out of his roster of former World Championship attendees, an untested rookie named Niels. With the roster locked in for 2015, expectations were high for Team Origin. First, they had to go through the Challenger Series to qualify into the LCS. Team Origin unsurprisingly demolished all competition throughout the EUCS spring season. They finished in first place with 9 wins and 1 loss to second place team Lowland Lions White. In the finals of the Challenger Series where the winner gets automatically qualified into the EU LCS, Team Origin stomped Copenhagen Wolves Academy. At the very last play of the series, Xpeke backdoored the Nexus, something reminiscent of his most famous play in League of Legends history. All of those kills, oh, Peke is on the base. It doesn't matter though, because everyone is dying. Four versus five, it's his Origin are say. winning. Peke is pecking the Nexus. This will be going down here, Stress. And Origin, welcome to the LCS, because you've just dominated this series. You've taken the first place in the spring split of the Challenger series. Congratulations. Team Origin automatically qualified into the 2015 EU LCS Summer Split. They would carry their success from the Challenger Series into the professional scene. It was hyped from the beginning that Team Origin would be a possible contender for the EU LCS Summer Championship along with Fnatic and H2K. In the first two weeks, the team proved just that and stomped all their games. They exerted force right from the early game. Team Origin had a combination of really strong laning phases mixed with early aggression from Amazing. Amazing and Mithy synergized and obtained control in the jungle. They were able to set up Origin with great engages that would go in their favor. Amazing is still in a pit. <laughs> You'll see me, here we go! He's got a three-man Glacial Prison! Origin and I'm looking for another team fight as Freddy has managed to zone away Origin. But a long-range Acid Hunter secures another kill for Niels. And so is has teleported in. He's put the Equalizer down, he's got himself a double kill. He's burning them down as Niels gets a double of his own. And Fox is set to retreat. Origin get themselves four kills. Analysts describe Team Origin as a triple threat, meaning that Niels, Xpeke, or Soaz can be considered the main carries of the team depending on the team composition. Soaz has an expansive champion pool ranging from tanks to harp carries. His skill and ability to carry Team Origin will be highlighted later. As for Xpeke, he played low economy mid laners and farmed in the early game in Rome. Rather than being the harp carry like in the past, he put emphasis on playing picks that strengthened the team. Out of all the carries, it was the untested rookie Niels that shined the most. His mechanics on then meta champions Callista and Vayne was one of the best in Europe. His play was especially showcased during week 1 where he was awarded MVP. 
Team Origin maintained dominance in the standings throughout the split but did however show weaknesses. When Team Origin lost the early game, they were unable to play from behind and come back. For example, in their game against Rockat in Week 3, Rockat shut down Amazing and Mythi. Niels is dealing with the bot lane, so that's why Origin's not going for Dragon because Rockat pushed into waves and they want to make a pick. They do and they find Mythi. Let's see if they can take down the cow. They do. That's first blood right off the bat. Now Amazing on the retreat path as Yankos dodges away. There's the fire burning him down and Yankos will manage to pick up a kill on to Dragon for Rockat. They were behind in the goal lead at 20 minutes for the first time in the split. Team Origin still attempted to maintain aggression by forcing fights, but it did not go in their favor. Fish is on Nuke Duck. Who is going to get jumped on? But Soez might have gone a little too far forward. Mithy, hey, back on the rise. That's what they needed. Will Origin be able to get the pick off Niels? Going low. The equalizer equalizes Niels. Peke is pooling away, but Rocket have surrounded him. And that's another kill. Yankos picks up one. Origin tried to even out the gold lead, but instead they get equalized by Steve. And this is the first time at 20 minutes that Origin finds themselves behind in gold. Usually they're 3,000, 4,000 gold ahead. Suddenly they're struggling. Another thing to note is that Team Origin was consistently compared to Fnatic throughout this split. Not only just because Xpeke and Soaz of old Fnatic were on the roster, but the new Fnatic team made a legendary undefeated run in the summer split. They were compared because Team Origin was the only team that could potentially rival the 2015 roster of Huni, Rainover, Fevivin, Reckless, and Yellowstar. In both games played in the regular season, Fnatic triumphed over Team Origin and took the victory. At the end of the regular season, Team Origin finished in second place with 12 wins and 6 losses. They would receive a bye and compete in the semifinals against third place Team H2K where they would come out on top in the series 3-1. to We now go on to the EU LCS Summer Championships against the undefeated Fnatic. It was a matchup a year in the making, dubbed Old Fnatic vs New Fnatic. The community was hoping to go all 5 games and both teams knew that it would be a close series. For Fnatic, they knew the series would be close and it would be their greatest chance at losing. For Team Origin, this series would be a culmination of an entire season of comparison and hype to Fnatic. Game 1 was a slow and methodical early game with the only notable achievement being Team Origin maintaining stacked dragon control. It wasn't until the 19 minute mark that action picked up with kills being traded whenever there was an engagement. However, Team Origin came out ahead past 20 minutes. You see all the deep wards. Fnatic got a little grouped up. They're focusing on the tower. Origin are the ones that are split and retreating. Reckless is trying to run him down with Whimsy. The explosive cask is going to mix them around. Barrel into barrel for a double barrel kill. Huni gets knocked down. Feather than Reckless retreating. Reckless is low. Peck is going to start charging the piercing arrow. He's going to snipe Reckless, but not enough for the kill. Former teammates chasing him down. The piercing arrow from Peck penetrates Reckless's heart. And Fnatic lose four. In the mid-game, it became a story about Soaz's newly reworked Gangplank. He was able to maintain a significant lead from Huni, in fact being able to flame horizon him in CS. The split push was something Fnatic was unable to handle. Even when Fnatic initiated a teamfight, they had to recall to answer Soaz or else he would backdoor. Soaz is looking for another tower! Because got some minions to deal with first. The cannon barrage is going down, and the rest of Origin, they've been engaged on! Yellowstar's looking for the fight! They've got Mithy, but he's not a damage dealer! That's an aggressive rocket jump forward! Soaz has the help! So is forced away. Fnatic are going to try dig deep and try to protect their base. But he's pulling all of Fnatic back to the Nexus so Nils can take down the last outer turret. Origin, they are still in full control. At the 31 minute mark, Amazing initiated the last team fight of the game to break Fnatic's 21 game winning streak. Ah, misses because Origin could just sidestep. Re but look at the barrel! Fnatic have lost one, they've lost their captain, even through the unbreakable will. Origin are going to push forward. The chain of corruption doesn't connect, but it didn't need to because Niels has got himself another kill. Origin are pushing into the Nexus search for Fnatic in a 2v5. It's simply not going to happen. For the first time in three months, 12 weeks, six patches, one team added one loss to Fnatic. And it's Origin in the finals. Game 2 saw Fnatic adjust from their first loss. A sloppy teamfight and bad initiation from Mythi put the goal lead in Fnatic's hands. 
From then on, it seemed Team Morgan lacked synergy throughout the game. Amazing was overextending and got caught several times. So as attempted to engage Huni's gangplank multiple times, but Huni would prevail in the end. Maybe gonna give the zone control. Huni gets yes. caught here by Soaz. Another fight. Canna Barrage comes down. Huni needs to dodge those undertows. The barrels are up. He's got a crit. Huni's trying to outplay Soaz and he's got backup. It's Yellow Star that steals the kill or secures it, depending on your point of view. They hold them to like 5,000 gold leads. Void Staff picked up for Febivin. And we're gonna see Huni and Soaz go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Triforce Eye Edge, and Huni just Goomba stomps Soaz. Even in the team fights, Mithy made errors that cost Neil's life. Uh, rather, Huni continues to push down bottom, and Niels is flashed away. Reckless is looking for the kill. He gets headbutted towards Niels. Niels is down. Mithy's gonna be so disappointed with that. And Origin lose four as Soaz comes back to life. Fnatic took Game 2 off of Origin's mistakes. In Game 3, it was relatively even at the mid-game with both teams obtaining kills through skirmishes. However, it was ultimately decided on the last team fight where Reckless obtained a Penna kill. Rainover was in trouble. There goes Yellowstar, another taunt. Who is looking for Mithy? Wild Growth will slow them down. Glitter Lance connects as well. And Reckless plus that. That's a kill oh, to Reckless, gets a... That's a double. He's looking for triple more. Kill. That's a triple. He's looking for four. That's the Quadra. He will get it. The reset forward. Looking for a pentakill. We're in Sweden. The Swedish Penta kill. Gets, it. gets a pentakill. Reckless is on fire today. He's jumping forward. He gets the kills. He wins the fight. For Fnatic. In Game 4, Origin utilized a composition that protected Niels in the late game. It was another even match throughout with Fnatic having the edge in the gold lead. However, by late game, Niels demonstrated his power as he caught out Rainover. Why not both? Oh, wow! Niels just crits down Rainover! Team Origin was able to turn control around thanks to a better scaling composition and the ability to siege thanks to Niels Tristana. Despite the goal lead on Fnatic, Niels and Team Origin forced a game 5 in the finale of the EU LCS. Look at the damage! We're gonna see Yellow Star numbing Rainover. That'll keep him alive a few seconds. Inhibitor comes down. Uni. Uni's oh. down! Niels is looking for more! Defensive flash from Rainover. They've got another inhibitor. Baron empowered super minions onto the last Nexus turret. Origin in the fourth game after 15,000 gold down and giving away They've two Barons. They're going to force game five. They're going to play Silver Scrapes and they're going to make the summer finals go all the way! After Silver Scrapes played in the break, Game 5 of one of the most hyped series of 2015 commenced. Once again, Soaz got his hands on Gangplank. The game began with an engagement five minutes in. We do see that they're gonna push in. Wow, they're chasing real far for this. Exhaust is on Huni. Niels may go down for first blood, and it's Rainover that picks it up. Soaz has teleported in. He's got himself one of the parley. Now Murthy is in trouble. The reckless swing comes down. He's barrel, trying to bring them onto the powder kick, and he's going to stay alive for a few seconds longer. The flame splitter comes out. Soaz will get himself a double kill. Now it's top laners on top laners. Oh, we do see another powder kick is up. It's gonna tick down. Look at the damage. damage. Soaz got it! After Soaz's triple kill, it was another close early game until Fnatic's dive composition put them ahead after catching Xpeke. The tower's gonna be focused, the kegs have popped, and there's the equalizer. Rainover does not care about your divide, and he runs amok. It's the equalizer that gets the kill. A defensive explosive cost as Reckless finds a second. That will be another tower to Fnatic. They regain the gold lead, and they can peel backwards for dragon number one. At the 26 minute mark, Team Origin attempted to base race with bot lane pushing Fnatic and the rest of the team defending. However, it did not go as planned. Fnatic have the Baron buff though. Baron empowered minions game 5 in the summer split finals and we have a mini base race on our hands. Rainover gets hurt by those powder kicks and he's in retreat. But look at Origin in the top right. They've not backed off. There's going to be a kill onto Soaz. With Soaz down, the wave clears down. Pekka's in a little bit of trouble. There's a flash forward aggressively. Origin have peeled away. It's 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 it. Reckless gets the kill on Pekka. They're looking for Amazing. They won't find him. Niels is still running for his life. Inhibitor's going to drop. The Undertow's killing the minions, and Fnatic, they've got a massive advantage in the final game of summer! It was still even in the goal lead as the match continued into the late game. To win the entire series, it came down to capitalizing on individuals' mistakes and pushing that advantage. 
Unsurprisingly, it was Fnatic that found those mistakes, such as when Xpeke was caught. With the long range from Tristana. Is he over there jumping in on Pekka? Pekka used to cleanse already. Emperor's Divide comes out, but that's not going to stop Reign of all. Yellow Star tippers onto Pekka. Yellow Star, the new Fnatic captain, kills the old Fnatic captain. That will give them another inhibitor down. When Team Origin was sieging mid, they recalled too late to stop Reckless from taking top inhibitor. This advantage was significant because Team Origin was able to win a team fight afterwards, but was forced away to defend their base from top lane super minions. In the last team fight of the game, Yellow Star landed a Tibbers onto Xpeke. That previous inhib fight may have been enough. Tibbers finds Peke. Peke does not have a down. 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 Equalizer burned him through. Reynov is trying to run down Reckless. We are going to see Niels rather. We are going to see the exhaust come out. Glitterlance catches. Undertow catches. Mendy's down. Double kill for Huni. Trade kill for Huni. That's the game. Huni's forced to run away. It's Yellow Star. That is forced. You're going to get him for fourth kill of the fight. So has survived. But it does not matter. Fnatic, they're going to finish it. They're going to kill the Nexus. And they're going to Worlds. They will represent Europe as the number one seed. Fnatic won the EU LCS Summer Championship, but Team Origin put up a hell of a fight. This epic series had everything from the incredible plays made to the storyline of old versus new. While Fnatic qualified into the World Championship, Team Origin had to run the gauntlet in the regional finals to make it to the world stage. Fortunately, they were able to beat out Rocket and the Unicorns of Love to secure their spot at the World Championship. With their eyes on Worlds, a taller and more difficult task was ahead. They would be placed in a very stacked group with many analysts predicting that they would not advance beyond the group stage. In a group with KT Rolster, LGD Gaming, and Team Solo Mid, Team Origin was seen as the underdogs. My name is Kudo, and in the next part we'll be talking all about Team Origin's run in the 2015 World Championship. Go here. Let me tell you something into your ear, boy. What I wanted to tell you, son, is that... What is it? I'm not really your father. <laughs> your mom was a slut. 